In this Cakewalk tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Cakewalk by BandLab for beginners. If you're just getting started on your home studio recording journey, or maybe you just want to know some of the basics of how to use Cakewalk by BandLab, then this tutorial video is for you. Welcome to Simple Green Tech. I'm Zane, and on this channel, I do weekly audio tech tips, tutorials, and reviews to help you conquer the tech and unleash your creativity. Now, here's what I'm going to cover in this Cakewalk tutorial. First, we're going to quickly set up your audio interface and your MIDI controller so it works with Cakewalk. Plus, I'll quickly show you how to add third-party VST plugins, and after that, we're going to do some recording and editing of MIDI, which includes using virtual instruments. After that, I'll get into audio recording, plus using effects plugins. Then I'll quickly go over arranging your song in the timeline, and finally, saving your mixed down audio so you can share your tracks with your friends and fans. Now let's look at how to use Cakewalk by BandLab. First up, I'm going to quickly go over setting up your audio interface and MIDI keyboard. So go up to Edit, then go to Preferences, and click here on Playback and Recording. Now you want your driver mode to be set to ASIO. Click Apply, then go up to Devices, and in the Input Drivers and Output Drivers section, make sure your audio interface has a check mark beside it in here. Now, if you need to change your sample rate or your audio driver bit depth, you can go into the Driver Settings tab and do that in here. And once you have everything set up for your audio interface, you can click Apply. And now we want to set up our MIDI controller. So go to Devices in the MIDI tab here. And then in Inputs, just select whatever MIDI controller you have. And you don't have to worry about outputs unless you are planning to output MIDI. But for this, I'm just doing input. And when that's set up, click apply. Now the final part of our setup is adding the folders for your third-party plugins. So go down to the file section, click on VST settings, and you'll likely see a couple of folders already in here. But you'll want to add a couple of other folders that are pretty common for plugins to install to. And those are C Program Files Steinberg VST plugins and C Program Files VST plugins. To do that, you just click Add, locate your folders in here, and then click OK. And any subfolders that you have within that folder will get added as well. And you'll notice as soon as you add the folder, it's going to start scanning for your plugins right away. And once that's set up, click Apply. Close this down, and now your cakewalk is set up and we're ready to start making music. So let's start an empty project. And first, I want to record some MIDI into it. And don't worry, if you don't have a MIDI controller, I'm going to show you how you can draw your MIDI notes in, so stick around for that. So let's add an instrument to our project. So click this plus sign right here, and then you want to click on Instrument right there. And for this cakewalk tutorial, I'm going to use the drum plugin that comes with Cakewalk. So I'll just go down to Drums and click on this one here. And now I'll click Create. You can now test out your MIDI controller if you have one connected and see if it works. Now click on this red Arm for Record button. But before we actually start recording, there are a couple more settings that I quickly want to adjust. And the first is the metronome. So click on the metronome right here, and then where it says record count in, I want to change that to one measure. Then click OK, and this is going to give you a count in before you actually start recording after you press the record button. Also, make sure that this button right here, the metronome while recording button, is turned on. It should be yellow if it's on. You can also enable the metronome during playback, and this is great for practicing before you start recording. And another setting that I'm going to change right away is the recording mode. So what you want to do is go to the record button right here, right click on it, then under the recording mode section, click on sound on sound, then click OK. And what this does is it allows you to record over top of MIDI without overwriting it, so you can add notes in. And we're now ready to record.
All right, so that's just a basic kick and a snare drum. And if we want to quantize that, which means lining it up so it will hit on where the beat should be, you can click on the Q button on your computer keyboard and open up the quantize menu. And in here, I'm just going to choose eighth notes. Then I'll click OK. And if we double click on our MIDI clip, we can see in here everything is lined up perfectly to the eighth note. Now, what if we want to add some hi hats to this? We can just click record and then add our hi hats over top of our kick and snare. Now, when you double click on the clip and bring up the piano roll, you'll see that we have some more notes in here. All right, so that's our drum beat and MIDI recording. Now I wanna show you how to draw your MIDI notes in. So let's add another instrument. This time I'm going to add the bass guitar plugin that comes with Cakewalk. So we have it on another track here. I'm just gonna close down the interface. All right, so we're now going to disarm this track for recording as we're just going to be working on our bass guitar track. And to draw your notes in, you wanna right click over here in the timeline on your track, then go to view, piano roll. And now we've got our new piano roll for our bass guitar instrument. And you can just go in here, click and drag. And make your notes in there like that. And you may need to drag the clip so it goes to the beginning of your song. And we can now listen to what it sounds like. If you're getting some value out of this video, please hit the thumbs up button. It really helps the channel out and I appreciate it so much. Now let's get back into the Cakewalk tutorial. All right, so we now have a bass line and a drum beat. Let's record some audio into this and I'm going to record my electric guitar. So first we need to go to the plus sign again, but this time we're going to add audio. And for our input, we want to select whichever input it is that you have your guitar plugged into. I have mine into input two, which is the right. So I'm going to click on that. Now, the thing is, if you're recording an instrument or a microphone, it's going to be a mono source. So you want to choose a mono track, not a stereo track. All right, so we now have this audio track that we're going to record our guitar onto. And if we want to hear our guitar while we're recording, Click on this button right here, and this will allow you to monitor while you're recording. And you'll see when I play now, my levels show up. And if you do this, you'll be able to hear your guitar. But it's pretty plain the way it is. So I want to add an effect to this. And to do that, I'll just click on this plus sign beside effects and go to insert audio effects. And I'm going to add the guitar amp simulator that comes with Cakewalk. So I'll go to overloud and then TH3. And once TH3 is open, you'll see this area here that says banks and you have a few banks here. And each one of these has a bunch of presets in them. And you can see the presets down here and you can scroll through them in each bank. And go through these presets, find one that you like, or you can build your own rig. There are a bunch of amps that you can choose from and you can just build your own rig and create your own sound. I'm just going to quickly go with a preset and start recording. So I have the sound that I want. Now I'm going to arm this track for recording and we'll start recording. And if we're happy with that take, we can disarm it from recording and turn off the monitoring and we can just listen back to what we've recorded. If you want to adjust the levels, you can open up the console. Just go up to views, console view, and now we can see our mixer down here. And you'll see the levels in each channel when I press play. And you can adjust the levels by moving the sliders down or up however you need them. And if you want to close the console down, you would just click down here on this X 
and it's out of your way. And if you want to close any of these sidebars here, if they're in your way, you can click on these arrows at the side and that will unclutter your interface. So all you're focusing on is your music. Now we have our guitar, a bass line, and a drum beat here. So let's arrange some things in the timeline a little bit. Now first I want to duplicate this MIDI track here because it's only going halfway through our song. So to do that I can just hold down control on my computer keyboard, click and drag to wherever I want it to go, and then let go. And you can move your audio or your MIDI around however you like on the timeline. You can even duplicate it later on, so if this is like a part that needs to be duplicated in your song, you can duplicate it and bring it to a section later on in your project. Now let's just say this is our full project and this is what we want to share with our friends and our fans. So we need to export it as an mp3 file. And to do that you just want to go up to File, Export, Audio, and then in here you can choose where you want to save your audio file, the file name that you want to give it, and what type of file you want it to be. So I want it to be an mp3. I'm just going to save it to the desktop and I'll just call this test. And then we're going to export it. And you can select the bit rate that you'd like. I really like 192, but you choose whatever one you like. You can even encode your ID3 info in here if you like. You can put your the title of the song in here your artist name, album year, whatever you want in here. And this is what's going to show up in various audio players. But you don't have to fill any of this out if you don't want to. Then just click OK and you're done. Click here to check out my Cakewalk tutorial playlist. Or click down here to see what YouTube thinks you should watch next. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more videos from me. Thank you so much for watching. For Simple Green Tech, I'm Zane. Keep creating and we'll talk soon.